Hello, this is Jeannie Alcott. Help is here for you. You can get the help you need. That has a refreshing sound to it, doesn't it? God is ready to help you get answers and miracles and provision and health. And to show you how to receive that help, I encourage you to get two messages I've prepared. This album of CDs is called Help Is Here. Amen. And I also want to send you a bracelet. It's a royal blue cloth bracelet. It's for men and women, and it has a message embroidered on it. It says, God is awesome. And you can adjust the size to fit your wrist. So request the two messages on CD, an inspiring bracelet, by calling 918-459-9191. Or write or go to our website, alcottministries.org. Get the help you need. This is Jeannie Alcott. God bless you. Jeannie and John Alcott welcome you to Word of Power broadcast today. This message can equip and empower you to achieve and receive what God has for you. We believe by the end of this teaching and time of prayer, you will feel the power of God in a greater way. You'll sense how near He is and how He desires to help you. As God's presence and anointing touches you, receive the miracles and answers waiting for you. We encourage you to contact us at the end of this broadcast. Jeannie and John are ready to pray in faith over your life. Now, receive a word of power. It is so good to be with you in God's Word. This is Jeannie Alcott. Thank you for joining me. A former Prime Minister of Britain once said this, No army can march on a retreating mind. He's saying no army can move forward into victory if it's thinking about retreating. If retreat is on their mind, they cannot march into victory. As Christians, we are a marching army that has its mind set on victory. If our mind isn't set on moving forward and winning what we desire, then we will retreat. No army can march on a retreating mind. Don't have a retreating mind. Get your mind set on winning. That will help you fight to the finish. That will help you have hope until you see the work of God complete in your life. So your mind has to be set on it, set on a victory from God. Don't try to move forward and march into what you must do, and at the same time, have your mind filled with the possibility of retreating, because the mind is way too powerful. This is what God has been showing us in the message about our mindset. If our frame of mind is to back away, it's going to be hard for our body to go forward. In other words, we'll have a hard time acting in faith. You can't march forward when your mind is retreating. Just imagine it this way. You're trying to walk forward, and yet you've got a thick, strong rope around you, and it's pulling you back. That's the picture of what your mind is doing to you if it's set on retreating. It's a mindset of retreat. It will pull you back and prevent you from going forward where you're trying to get. You're fighting, but you can't fight to the finish because your mind keeps telling you to retreat. But if you have your mindset on winning, you'll move forward and you'll keep doing that until you finish the fight. So you have to have the frame of mind of victory. Let me show you what can happen when we don't have the right frame of mind. This is what a soldier did when he was fighting overseas. Now, he actually had been a very good soldier for nine years. This man, Charles, had a good conduct award and had been promoted to sergeant. But then his mindset changed. He began to have fears of death and started heavy drinking. Instead of setting his mind on completing his fight and gaining victory, depression caused him to retreat in his mind. He became afraid that he would be transferred to a dangerous patrol, and he felt that would be worse than surrendering. So much so that after 10 days of planning and drinking, he tied a white t-shirt to his rifle and defected to the enemy. Instead of marching in his mind, he was retreating. But as so many times happens, people don't recognize the repercussions of retreating. When Charles surrendered, he disappeared in that country for almost 40 years. After all that time, he was able to get away enough so he could turn himself in to the U.S. military authorities. He pleaded guilty to desertion. When he was interviewed as to why he did this, he talked about his depression and fears of death and heavy drinking. He thought the enemy army would return him home. But instead, he experienced terrible conditions and suffered. He said, I knew 100% what I was doing, but I did not know the consequences. 
I didn't know the consequences. Oh, if we retreat because we allow our mind to become set on fears and discouragement, we can experience the consequences of it. This is why we are a marching army that does not have a retreating mind. We have a winning mind. We know God is working for us and God never is defeated. So if we can just keep our mind from concentrating on the fears and discouragement, then we can concentrate on the victory we know is coming. When our mind is set on those things, it will keep us going. It won't be a rope that is pulling us back and cause us to desert. Rather, when our mind is set on God and His power to cause us to win, that will propel us forward. Instead of pull us back, it will propel us, take us into what we want to see achieved. We can receive victory because our mind was set on it. Therefore, we fight to the finish. The Bible gives us a great picture of how a mindset on fears is different than a mindset on fighting. It was David who showed us each side of how this can happen. He did both, had a mindset on fighting and a mindset on fears. We'll start out by recalling the tremendous story in 1 Samuel chapter 17 of David and the giant Goliath. That giant was challenging the army of Israel, the army of God, and David couldn't stand for it. So when he arrived on the scene and he heard the giant, His mind was set on seeing the people of God victorious, and because of it, he was able to answer the challenge of the giant and defeat him in a remarkable way. It was the true act of a hero, someone who knew God could defeat any enemy and was willing to fight to the finish. Because of his act of courage in killing the giant, the army was able to fight and win over the Philistines. So King Saul of Israel had favor on David. Now fast forward to years after this when David begins to win the favor of the people of Israel, so much so that it makes Saul jealous. Then he realizes God has anointed David to be the next king because Saul disobeyed. This is when he goes after him. The chase is on. And when the chase is on, it can wear us out. We can get tired in our mind because we have fought this disease or that financial need or that problem at work so long. We have stood to see that relationship repaired, or our home repaired, or to see our dream come to pass. And during that time, if we're not careful, our mind will start retreating. It becomes set on pulling back instead of propelling us forward. This is what happened to David. He became tired, and therefore his mind wasn't set on fighting to the finish. So he allowed his fears and discouragement due to him the same thing that soldier did, cause him to desert. Here's what he did. We know the giant he had defeated when he had the right mindset was from the town Gath. Well, of all things, now David goes to Gath. He's going to the enemy territory of the Philistines, the very ones that were defeated because he had overcome their big guy, the giant Goliath. He had defeated the giant of Gath, but now he's going to the king of Gath. He was hoping no one would recognize him and he could stay among them so Saul couldn't get to him. Not a good strategy. You don't go to one enemy, so another enemy can't get to you. When David arrived at Gath, he went to the king Achish. But the servants of the king said, Is not this David, the king of the land? Now realize that the enemy is calling David king. God has anointed him to be the next king, and even the enemy believes that. But David is having problems fighting until he sees God's promise fulfilled. See, our enemy, the devil, knows who we are and the good things that God has for us and that we can have victory. So he's going to infiltrate our mind until he can get us set on running instead of fighting. And that's where David was. He was running instead of fighting to the finish. So when he heard the servants and he realized he had been recognized, he changed his behavior. He began to act as if he was insane. He foamed at the mouth. He had spit dripping down his beard. And he wrote on the gate doors. Why was he doing this? What would that accomplish? Well, in those ancient days, they regarded the insane as being exempt from harm. If someone harmed an insane person, the gods would be provoked and they would be in trouble. So they wouldn't dare touch someone who was mad. When the king saw David's behavior, he commanded that he be taken away from them. So he was able to escape and go hide in a cave. What a difference! From the man who stood before the giant of Gath acting courageous and the man who is standing before the king of Gath, acting crazy. What made the difference? His mindset. In the first scenario, the mind of David was set on finishing. He knew he could have victory. 
In the second scene, his mind is set on fear and causing him to run. Now, we know that after David had that episode in Gath, his mindset became one of victory because after a while, he was made king of Israel. He fulfilled God's promise and his position for many years. This will make the difference in your victory or disappointment, your mindset. If your mind is set on faith, you will finish in victory. If your mind is set on fears, you will finish in failure. So, as you're hearing these words from God, allow them to infiltrate your mind, to help you set your mind on what you desire. You're a one-person army marching to the victory you know God has prepared for you. And we are going into that victory now. God has prepared it, and we're going to receive it by prayer. We remove the rope off you that's trying to pull you back, and we see the Spirit of God propelling you. You're going forward into where you want to be. Let's pray now. Oh, Lord, we know this fight is just about finished for my friend. They have been fighting for what they know is theirs, and the enemy has tried to infiltrate the thinking and cause them to retreat. But they're marching on, marching on, Christian soldiers. They're going into a great victory, and that's your word that you're speaking to them. They are destined for a great victory. There isn't any need to even think about retreat. That isn't ahead. What's ahead of them is the great unfolding of those desires you've put in their heart. They're going to see miracle working power, your miracle working power, come into every event that happens. In your name, we command fears and discouragement to be gone. They cannot be a part of their mind. Instead, we infiltrate their mind with the hope of what is to come. Good and wonderful acts of God. The finish is coming, and it's going to be a great finish. One that they have longed for in their heart. So we praise you, God. Oh, we praise you for what is to come. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. When you fight to the finish, you see a good finish. This is what God is promising you, and we are here to help you march into it. John and I are by your side. We want to pray for you and intercede. So tell us what is fighting something in your life. We will fight to the finish and believe for your victory. As soon as we hear from you, we'll pray. And then we're going to write to you. By the Spirit of God and His anointing, we give you words that can help you receive from His Spirit. So get in touch soon. Okay, now is the time for your spiritual power line. Go around saying these words of faith. And then believe that God will give you the power to see them come to pass. Go around saying, I fight to the finish. I fight to the finish. And we want to help you do that so you can gain victory. So be sure to get this message. We'll send you all five parts of it and the prayer times we have in God's presence. Just request, is your mind set on it? It's offer number AM829. That's 829. You can have a CD for a gift of $8 into the ministry, or you can download it for a gift of $5. Just call or write or go to alcottministries.org. That's A-L-C-O-T-T ministries dot O-R-G. And it would be so good when you're at our website to watch our videos. These are very short yet very powerful messages. I encourage you to join me again tomorrow. Hear what God wants to speak into your life. This is Jeannie Alcott. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We believe God's Spirit is moving in a mighty way. So don't miss the opportunity for Jeannie and John to pray over your life in a personal way. As you share with them, they will intercede by faith for you to receive all God has for you. Call 918-459-9191 or write to Alcott Ministries, Post Office Box 3400, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma 74013 or go to our website at alcottministries.org. There you can also listen to Word of Power broadcasts, as well as request special gift offers and be blessed by devotionals. Now, we encourage you to get a copy of this message and give a gift into God's work. Then, expect Him to grow your giving into wonderful miracles. Be with us next time for a Word of Power.